Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Diane's Kitchen. No, it's not a cooking show, but it's a time that we can sit down in the kitchen and uh, talk about interesting things, interesting people, find out what's going on in the world. First of all, I would like to thank two people, obviously my guest, Trevor Peterson, and Baron Electric. <clears throat> if you are privileged to be a Baron Electric member, you will see something in this month's bill, and that will be your capital credits check. Baron Electric is dividing $600,000 between the co-op members, and usually there's a big to-do, there's a luncheon, you pick up your check, you take stuff for the food pantry, you get your blood pressure taken, you have some ice cream. Not this year, like last year, they've decided to err on the side of caution, but they are going to give you your check as a reduction in your bill. Baron Electric, if you have Baron Electric, look them up, baronelectric.com. You might be surprised what they can do for you. Trevor, I have waited a long time to interview you. Good morning. Good morning, Diane. You're a man that has zigzagged for a while and I think has finally found what it is that you do best. Tell us, where are you from? Well, I grew up in the Blue Hills of uh, Bruce in Russ County. Ah. Um, I spent most of my childhood uh, trout fishing on Devil's Creek. Uh, I had some close neighbor friends and that's pretty much all we did. Oh, nice. Oh. Ideal childhood. Yes, yes. Did you have a clue when you were a kid, second grade, your teacher said, and Trevor, what would you like to be when you grew up? Um, what would you have answered? Um, I really had no idea what I was going to do uh, when I grew up. Um, I always liked the outdoors, so I guess if I were to give you an answer, um, maybe somewhere along the lines of a, a warden or something like that. Ah, professional trout fisherman. That would be nice. I wanted to be not a warden, but a forest preserve, forest person, you know. that. Sure. Yeah, well, they didn't take women then. Sorry, we're not yeah. capable of taking women. So it's like, oh, rats. Right. So I picked something else. So what was your first career not job but career move well my my father was a carpenter so i kind of grew up with that kind of background um i remember when he would go do jobs uh, i would tag along with him and hand him his pencil or tape measure or hammer or whatever so i think car construction and carpentry uh just came natural to me um after high school i kind of dove right into that and i did a, a few different jobs working on traveling construction crews uh, things of that sort. Um, and then it just, uh, I ended up uh, working for Northwest Builders out of Rice Lake. They do commercial and residential construction. Um, and I really liked there. I worked there for about eight or nine years. Um, had a great time there. There was uh, a few old timers there that, um, that that taught me a lot about carpentry and just the little finesse things that, uh, that really helped me now. So. Those old world craftsmen, you know, you look for them all the time. Somebody that knows the ins and outs and the, you know, the backstory of a lot of what they do. Uh, really, craftsmen. And you got to learn from them. Lucky you. My dad was a carpenter, too. Obviously, okay. that was another career I could not follow, especially those days. Women didn't do that. Sure. So I could eliminate another thing. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's just, oh, lucky me, no yeah. no forest ranger, no carpenter, but um, I still love carpentry. My poor husband, he rolls his eyes when I get out the hammer. It's like, you don't need such a 16-penny nail. Something smaller <laughs> will do. Okay, here you are doing carpentry, learning, apprenticing. What's next? Um, I think at that time it was right around um, 2008, and uh, things happen in the market. Um, I remember going through that and just the uncertainty of job security, things of that sort. And I had a couple friends um, that were in law enforcement at the time 
And I always really enjoyed their stories. They always had the best stories. Um, and they, they just talked about their training and what they were doing. And I just, I felt like, um, I felt like that would be a good fit for me. Um, my father growing up, he was always by the book. Everything was by the book. So that's kind of how I was raised as well. Good. Um, and it, it just seemed like a good fit for me. So in 2008, I enrolled in the criminal justice program at the WITC in Rice Lake. Who was surprised? Who was not surprised in your family? Well, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. Um, what we did um, just to be able to, to go back to school, because at that time, um, my wife and I were both working full time and you have full time bills. So it was <laughs> difficult uh, transition to me just working, um, you know, here and there, my wife working full time. So we actually moved in with my awesome mother-in-law wow. for a year wow. and paid off. This is uh, this is probably in 2007. Um, we moved in with her for a year and we paid off all of our debt in order for me to go to school. Good for you. So that year with my mother-in-law, looking back on it now, it was great. It was great. But at the time, it was difficult. <laughs> yeah, for all of you. Yes. You know, you don't realize how much you interrupt somebody's routine until yep. suddenly you're on the other side of it. Something you haven't experienced yet. Your kids are still little, but, you know, yep. suddenly you wave bye-bye, they're off to college, and then they're back home. Right. Who knows for how long. So yeah. you, had, you have a wife. How did you meet her? Well, um, the first time I ever saw her, I was, uh, when I was in school, I was working at Turtleback Golf Course in Rice Lake. And I kind of, I was a bartender and then I waited on tables for the banquets and stuff. And I remember her place of employment had a banquet there and it was a group of girls that she sat with and they kept asking for water. I don't know how many <laughs> things of water I delivered to that table, but there was one one woman there that totally caught my eye and I remember after the evening was done I didn't say anything to her and she didn't say anything to me um, but they had name tags on and I remember she left her name tag and I actually picked it up and I put it on my chest and I told my other co-worker I said I'm gonna marry that girl how and old, how old were you uh, now you're gonna ask me dates and stuff um, no, just that how was, old were you I want to say I was probably early 20s Okay. Somewhere on there. So you found um, the woman you loved. Yes, and it, and it so happened that we had a mutual friend together that kind of connected the dots. So it was it was just meant to be. So. How wonderful! Because so many of those it was just meant to be end up in total disaster. Of course, as a cop, sure. you know what total disaster is. How do you pronounce her name? Your wife. My wife's name. Uh -huh. It's Rhiannon. So like the Fleetwood Mac song, Rhiannon. Rhiannon. Okay. Perfect. You got it. Okay. Um, what nationality is she? What is that? Irish? She's, I, I think it was, uh, I'm, I think she's a little bit, uh, I'm going to get corrupted on this later, I'm sure. So I'm not going to comment on her. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a little bit, I know, I know. Um, yeah, I can't, I, I can't say for sure. No, oh, I'm gonna you're get in trouble now. I know, I know. Yeah. How many years have you been married? A long time, it feels like. Uh -huh. so, but it's been it. great. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so you meet the, the woman of your dreams. Um, you're doing carpentry work, but something, something in the conversations with your buddies goes, you know, maybe I want to try that. It was a big, I mean, going from carpentry this is a hammer, this is a piece of wood, this is a saw, this is what you do to law enforcement with all the intricacies of law enforcement. I mean, there are ethical questions, there are moral questions, there are legal questions. Uh, you've got to do things by the book, like your dad. Was it an easy fit for you, law enforcement? Yeah, I think in the beginning, um, I just want to back up, and there's one more major pivotal uh, thing that kind of contributed contributed for me to get into law enforcement. And it, and it took a while. Um, my best friend uh, was murdered in Rice Lake in 2000, early 2000s. 
Um, and it, that really, that impacted me. Um, and I knew that there was, there was, there was an element out there that maybe I felt like I could go into and make a difference and maybe stop that from happening. Or I just really felt to call to pursue that. And he was a, he was a driving force. Uh, we still are in close contact with his mother over the years and, you know, I just, I just felt like, you know, it was, a, it, it was quite a few number of years afterwards, but it was just something that really pushed. And I think that's what, in the beginning, you talk about the fit. Um, I got into law enforcement for those specific reasons. And I think getting into law enforcement later in life, it just allowed me to be that much better of an officer because I had so much life experience. You know, I knew what it was like to have an argument with my wife. I knew what it was like to have kids that were being disobedient or whatever. Um, I knew those things and it just, it made me be a better cop. So in the beginning, it was a good fit. Um, it was a huge adjustment for the family, just with the schedule and all that stuff. I mean, I don't have to tell you, but, um, the schedule was, was pretty daunting, you know, the weekends, the nights and all that stuff. So yeah. Being the rookie. Yep. <coughs> Can't get rid of this cough. <coughs> so. How do you handle the murder of a friend? I mean, I can see a death. It was it was horrible. They were died in a car crash. They got hit by a bus. But to have somebody murdered, I mean, how do you justify that in your brain? Or do you ever? Uh, it, it was pretty difficult. I think um, looking back on those years, I shut a lot of it out because I didn't know how to deal. I didn't know how to deal with it at sure. that age. Sure. Um, but it, yeah, it was just, it's very shocking. I mean, I, this, my best friend, he was my best friend ever since we were little. Oh. Um, so I grew up with him and, oh. you know, his mom was like my second mom and I still call her mom. So it was, uh, it, and even to this day, it's it's still difficult because sure. I, you know, oftentimes sure. I imagine what it would be like. Um, yeah. There isn't a time that I don't go by his grave and stop and yeah. have a chat with him and, Yep. Sure that yep. yep. I know. And you spend the rest of your life saying, what if? Right. So um, who did you start with when you graduated from cop school? Um, I started with the city of Barron part-time. And I worked there for approximately, I think it was six to eight months. And then a part-time position opened up for the city of Spooner. I applied for that, um, got that. And then I think it was, um, it was approximately three months after getting hired part-time that I was uh, offered a full-time position. I still remember that phone call to that day. I was in Florida on vacation, and uh, at that time, it was Chief uh, Bob Andrea, which, great guy. Um, I remember him saying, uh, you know, if you if we offer you a job, would you stay a while? You know, would you stay working for Twitter? <laughs> so... I guess I guess uh, I held to that. You know, I had some different opportunities throughout my my time at Spooner that I could have went elsewhere, but I always remember that conversation. So, um, yeah. So you have a wife, you have children. Was your wife employed? Was it going to be difficult for her to move? Um, yeah, that was, we've done a lot of moving our family jokes around with us about being professional movers and all that stuff. And it took a while to get settled. Um, my wife has always been 100% supportive wow. while I was in law enforcement, um, which is, right. you know, it's, I know, I know that sometimes that she had, um, uh, struggled with some things and, oh, you know, sure. maybe wanted to say some things and, yep. um, she voiced them a few times, but for the most part, um, she's always been 100% supportive of uh, my career in law enforcement. Yes, Good. absolutely. Good woman. Now, what does your wife, do you feel free to say what your wife does in the world today? Yeah. So she's she works as a home health and hospice nurse. They have such respect for me. Hospice work can't be easy. I mean, to yeah, I, I, I don't know, you know, you talk about law enforcement being a difficult job, <laughs> um, doing that type of job has to be difficult. And, you know, um, my wife is a very caring, loving person. So yeah. I think, you know, she gets attached to people and, you know, it's got to be a difficult 
thing to go through when when they do ultimately pass you know so i agree and then you deal with that person's regret with their anger about life and you sure. never know because dying is an individual thing and everybody's got a different attitude when they go into that or face it so she must have to be a very uh loving caring patient person was she doing that when you got the job in spooner as a cop she's she's moved around um to different positions within nursing um so i, I think she was she was working in the er at the time she's she's a very well-rounded nurse she's she's worked in um different departments and stuff like that but at the time no she wasn't in that department so so now here you are you're a cop sure you moved up here how long did you stay with the Spooner PD? I was there um, a little over 10 years. Wow. Spooner. Good for you. And you yep. be, you became the uh, canine officer. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a great, I, I really enjoyed that position. Um, it was something that was definitely needed in the city of Spooner. Um, and I had the opportunity I kind of, you know, like uh, I, I watched um, Chief Deputy Pank talk on the Ben and Fitzy show, and he kind of talked about yeah. um, just how I came to them with an idea, and I didn't, really didn't know that I was going to be the handler. I just knew that the city needed it, and I knew that, you know, mm -hmm. maybe I would have a shot at it. So mm -hmm. I really didn't know that I would ultimately get that position until at the end when we were like, okay, we're going to move forward with this. So. It was definitely a, a cool thing to do. I really enjoyed that position. Having had a husband in law enforcement, I am just amazed at what a dog knows that you don't. I remember once they were looking for somebody in Spooner, and they knew he was in a certain neighborhood. So, of course, they're checking garages, they're checking old buildings, they're checking everything. They brought the dog up. Um, I can't remember where the dog was from. Brought the dog in. He went to a tree and he looked up and ta-da, there was the guy they were looking for. Who to think to look into a tree? But the yeah, dogs those are, dogs are those dogs are truly amazing on what they can do. Yeah, um, I think in the beginning, once you know when we first started, we were at such an advantage because um, at the time, Washburn County Canine was Brennan Harrington, yeah. and he is just a wealth of information. Uh, he really excelled our program to to where it ended up being. So Excellent. very fortunate that you're not a cop today. Nope. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons. I you know I, I get a lot of people that uh, that ask me that. Um, was it I don't a good have move? one. Yes. For myself and for my family and uh, just where I'm at spiritually, it was an absolute right move. Um, but it's hard to put, you know, sometimes, you know, when you are when you step in line with God's will and God's plan, mm -hmm. we don't have the answers. Nope. But I do have the faith and I do trust him. And I know that he's going to lead me down that path. So how did you get from uh, cop to carpenter, back to carpentry? Well, I ended up ultimately ended up resigning from Spooner PD, mm -hmm. um, and then kind of launched my own business, carpentry business. Um, and it's been, I think, my last shift was May thirtieth, so it's been been a few months now. Um, the transition's been great. Uh, I meet so many awesome people. Just to like, you know, you're you're in someone's home working or whatever, and you get to you get to hear their story, and it's just it's been it's been an awesome experience. And you are the guy that everybody wants. In fact, you did some work for us. And one day you left and uh, Terry said, well, you know, next I'm gonna have him do this. And I said, you know what? He's finished with this job. And I don't think we're gonna be able to get him ever again. Because as soon as people understand what he does, his his phone is going to ring off the hook and the line is going to get longer and longer and longer. Am I right? Yes. You're reminding me that I still have a few projects that I need to wrap oh, up at your I? house. <laughs> yeah. But you're the type of guy everybody's looking for because 
everybody's got that little job, that one that's just a little bit more than they can handle because they're not quite sure how to do it. And wouldn't it be nice if we could hire somebody just to do this job? Well, nobody comes in and does just this little job. that uh sure. you do. How did you get your name for your business? I think it was a combination of uh, my wife and I were just, I mean, it's you name a business, it's pretty difficult if you sit huh. down and try to do it because you want it to reflect everything, what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to do. Um, so my wife initially, we were riding in a car and she came up um, with third day creations. Now, um, I guess the, the reasoning behind third day for me, and it's important is directly tied in with my faith. Um, I heard a pastor talk about one time about we as Christians need to live like that tomb is empty and Jesus did rise on the third day. So the third day just always kind of stuck with me. Um, and it, and it, uh, it opens up a lot of doors when I go to a job and people are like, well, what's third day? And oh, it's sure. like, well, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and it was something too. I'm sorry. Go ahead. When we first met you, you were a bartender. Now you are an obviously non-compromised, Bible-thumping, praise Jesus type of man. What happened and when? What changed you? Well, I think it all started. Um, well, it's it's been a it's been a journey, and it's been something that that God it continues to work on me this whole entire time. Same. I would say when it all started would be uh, my wife, you know, and I, be I, I believe that God puts people in our paths to direct us back to him. Yeah. Um, and my wife definitely was, uh, was the first. And then it, it just uh, kind of steamrolled into us regularly attending church. I met a youth pastor in Rice Lake who showed me that, hey, this, this life can be fun. Um, and we had a lot of fun. He was, uh, uh, his name is Rod Holum. Um, and he was, he was, uh, instrumental in my faith in the beginning, just to show me what it looked like, um, held me accountable. It was just, a he's an awesome guy. Everybody needs a guy like that. Yes. Everybody does help you transition into where God needs you to be. Yeah. If somebody is interested in talking to you about God, about your relationship with him, about business. Are you available? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, and that started in police work too. I, you know, we would have Bible studies at our house and uh, the week before I would end up arresting someone for most of the time it's drug related charges. Yeah. <clears throat> and the next week they'd be in my living room hearing about Jesus. Amen. So my door is 100% open. Um, and then that's, that's kind of why I wanted, when I started this business, I wanted to, I wanted to root my faith and who I was and everything into, this is who I am, my right. business on, you know, working and not working. So yeah, I have a, I have a Facebook page and I'll, I'll gladly give out my number that can be give out to, I don't, I'm still, you know, I, you know, about every week someone sends me a message that I dealt with when I was in law enforcement saying thank you, asking questions, and I'll give them my number and we'll chat. So, You're a tough guy to get a hold of because mm -hmm. you're, like I say, your list must be endless, you know, like the traditional Santa Claus list. It goes on and on and on and on and on yeah. because I think you've got two valuable things that people are looking for. One is let's get this project finished and the other is somebody who honestly knows God, not a religious God, not a out there somewhere in space grandpa with the long beard, um, looks down and goes, oh my goodness, what's going on in the earth? I just kind of forgot for a while. You have a relationship with the living God and it's delightful and I, it just radiates off of you. I really appreciate the things you do on Facebook. I mean, you know, I'm going through my Facebook and all of a sudden here's your, your face and you're talking about a job that you had done. Uh, what was the one about the layers? Yeah, it was, uh, it's interesting how God works. Um, mm -hmm. once, once you surrender to him, 
Yep. And you're like, all right, I'm all in. Just use me to save people, to introduce people to you. Um, you know, I was just, I was in a kitchen remodel and I'm peeling up layers of flooring, which there happened to be five layers of flooring in that house. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as it sounded. It actually went pretty uh, good. But uh, we've lived in I'm, a house like that. Yeah. 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 So I, as I'm doing that, you know, just God puts it on my heart that. I'm just thinking about like, you know, you, you brought it up earlier about the journey of like being a bartender to, to where I'm at today and, and just how God can just continually, if you're, if you're willing to take that step, that God will continue to, to work on you and draw you closer to him. Remove and I, I think layer. about, yeah, absolutely. And the fact that, uh, Facebook has become an easy place to share your experience. Yeah, the one thing that I uh, was real apprehensive about was just doing that stuff, stepping out there, because there's a lot of people that you know that want to see you fail or oh sure, uh, you know it's just you step out of your comfort zone. You know when mm -hmm. when you called and asked me to be on the show, you know my immediate reaction was no, I'm not doing that. But then I remember my wife shared with me um, some friends of ours that was impacted by one of the, just one of those videos that I put out. And as I'm trying to sit, as I'm trying to tell you, no, that I don't want to be on the show. <laughs> I have God telling me that, you know, who am I to stand in the way of what God wants to do in other people's lives? So yeah. if it means me stepping out of my comfort zone to, 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 so God can reveal himself to someone else. Out you go. I'm all in. Good. So. Good. Give us any contact information you have got so people can keep in touch. What's your phone number? So my, easiest, go ahead. The easiest way to get a hold of me is by my cell number, and that's 715 651 7001. Okay. Um, I do have a Facebook page that people can message me on there, and that's Third Day Woodworks. Um, that's the name of the company. Mm -hmm. um, those are really the two easiest ways. I do have an email, um, and that's Third Day Woodworks LLC at gmail.com. But mm -hmm. just shoot me a text, send me a message. Um, that's the easiest way. And, it, you know, whether it's work related or spiritual related or whatever. Right. You're open. It's totally fine. Um, I'm open. What kind of work for people's information? What kind of work do you do? Do you do whole houses? Um, that's something that um, I do have experience in. Sure. However, uh, you know, for the most part, I like to just keep it moving. I'm a very, and, and you know, when when Steve Pank was my captain in uh, in Spooner, he nicknamed me Turbo. So if that's any <laughs> indicator of. <laughs> how I work and how I move. I like to keep moving, um, you know, so two, three day projects is kind of ideally decks, um, any kind of uh, kitchen, bathroom remodel, stuff like that. And then any, any kind of repairs, whether it's a roof repair or anything, you need a new toilet put in, I can do that. You need a new sink put in, I can do that. Um, yeah, so, and I, right now I work with um, Rob Zeem at Arrow Building Center, he's a mm -hmm. phenomenal guy. Um, so I have a good working relationship with him. He's got tons of experience that we bring to the table when we come to your house and you're looking for ideas or whatever. Um, he's got all his experience and, and then I can offer my little experience too. And, and we come up with exactly what you want. So I, I'm dealing with a customer right now that wants a pergola put on her, on her deck. Uh -huh. Um, and I just told her, send me a picture and I'll make it. So, and she's got to know. For me, he's not kidding. If you yeah. want it, he'll build it. And it's amazing the work that you did for us. It's absolutely perfect. It's better than perfect. So we appreciate well, I it. I don't know if I'd go that far as being perfect, but no, it was. No, it was. Uh, it was a it was great, a great idea. Project. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. And that's, and, the, that's a good thing about it, too, is just working with that customer yeah. to develop that relationship that you can work together on a project. And at the end, you can both sit back and just be like, wow, we did that, you know? And that too is hard to find. I mean, how many times do you get somebody in there to do something and they do it the way they want it and they leave and you've paid them and you go, well, it's not quite what I wanted, but 
Right. And I've heard horror stories from customers, <laughs> and stuff that, you know, they paid for, they pay in advance and all that stuff. Yes. And, um, if the job's big enough, yeah, I might require a little bit um, down payment. But for the most part, you don't pay until you're done and until you're happy. So that's just amazing. One more time. What is your phone number? It's 715-651-7001. Wonderful. That's just amazing. Anything else you want to add? No, I just encourage people to, uh, you know, if they have any questions or anything like that about God or Jesus or how, how it all works, to just just ask someone. Um, I look at, uh, you know, over the course of my life and I look at this this journey that I've been on and I would never go back to the way my life was. It's, it's just right now, it's just filled with so much joy and so much peace, even in the world that we live in now, where it's so easy to listen to the radio or watch TV and just you know, create that anxiety, you know, and, and you don't, you don't need to live like that. We're not designed to live like that, you know? So I tend to keep it simple. Um, I follow what the Bible says to the best that I can. I ask for forgiveness when I screw up and that's all you can do. That's all we can do. And God does the rest. We serve an yep. awesome God. Thank you. Yes, we do so much for saying yes, for listening to the Holy Spirit and saying yes. Um, you're a great guy because you're open to who God is. Your wife is like a piece of gold in your life, but I'm sure you know that. I do. She's an amazing woman. Thank you, Trevor. I hope, um, I hope some years down the road you remember us and give us a call. <laughs> Because Terry's, <laughs> Terry's got more work for you to do, but you have more. People I, I don't to think reach. the work. I don't think the work will end with Terry. But, <laughs> so. Boy, do you know that man? Yeah, there's, yep, there'll yep. always be something. Yeah, definitely. Well, before we say goodbye to everyone, I just want to remind you, BarronElectric.com. Look it up. You might be surprised what they can do for you. You get money back. You get the money from your smart appliances. They're really there for you. It's a co-op. It's your company. So BarronElectric.com, if you get the newsletter, you're probably a member, but you might want to call and find out or go online and find out. Trevor Peterson is my guest today. Delightful person. Absolutely a delightful person who doesn't mind standing and talking to you. Explaining life, explaining the project, explaining who God is and why he loves us so much. Thanks everybody for watching, and remember, like I tell you every single week, keep it cooking.